With this, I'll move on to the next item on the agenda, and that is a speech by Fahim Yunus Qureshi Sahib. His title is Bad, the Guardian of Our Identity in the West. Fahim Yunus Sahib. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا If life was a jungle which animal would you like to be? Anyone? I want an answer to that question. The discussion will not move forward. If life was a jungle, which animal would you like to be? Which animal would you choose to be? Lion? Tiger? Okay, so there is a pretty clear consensus. You want to be a lion or a tiger? This question has deep relevance to the topic of my speech, which is Beth, the guardian of our identity in the West. Our identity, as respected Amir Saab said, is challenged very differently in the East, where scores of Ahmadi Muslims lost their lives in broad daylight on May 28th. Their families watched the horror unfold in front of them on TV screens. We all felt shocked, sorrowful. We were crying here on the other end of the world. I even forgot to pay my mortgage payment that month, something that I've never missed before. It's never happened in my lifetime. But if you thought that the identity of Islam in Ahmadiyyat is safe here in the West, think again. Don't get me wrong. There is, alhamdulillah, no attack on us here in the West. This country observes freedom of religion and freedom of expression like no other country that I know of. And we are very thankful for that. So when it comes to our American identity, we are as solid as any Muslim community can be. This country, if you really go down to the books, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what America stands for, but it's that pursuit of happiness where we as Muslims, where we as Ahmadis sometimes don't know how to carry ourselves. And along the way, we become very uncomfortable. We become almost embarrassed, ashamed of declaring who we are. And that's the topic of the discussion. In my opinion, America stands for such freedoms that no one, Jewish, Christian, Ahmadi Muslim, non-Ahmadi Muslim, no one should be ashamed of their faith. When I see a Jewish colleague at work who's wearing a yarmulke, or I see a medical student who's wearing a cross, my respect for them goes up. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that why a Muslim youth, why a Muslim would feel somewhat hesitant and not as proud about being a Muslim. Look at what Islam is being associated with. The world is saying, where are these educated Muslims? What are they contributing to science and knowledge? Where are these moderate Muslims? Where are these peaceful Muslims? We are branded as terrorists, as extremists, they're saying, if you have leadership, where is that spiritual leadership? 
that conflict manifests very, manifests very differently. I'll tell you a very simple example. A mother goes to pick up their children from a school bus. The child, boy or girl, gets off from the bus. The mother says, Assalamu alaikum. And the child goes, mm. They're embarrassed to say, Wa alaikum assalam because they are, their friends are also getting off from the bus. Their friends, parents are also standing. They don't want to verbalize, Wa alaikum assalam. The same child, boy or girl, 10, 15 years later, is now in college dorm somewhere. And they're very embarrassed to take out their prayer rod at the time of prayers and say their prayers in front of their roommates. And if that child is a girl, she has one of the toughest decisions of her life, whether she's going to wear a hijab or not, whether she's going to wear a coat, how much she's going to stick out, how different will she look, what kind of hijab should she wear. So these are deep issues for our children. What is even more disturbing is as to how parents are handling that. Not all parents, not all children, but something where even one is too many. Some parents would say, you know, you just focus on your studies. This is not the time for you to worry about Friday prayers. Even though you're 25 or 20 year old, I want you to get good grades. Don't worry about Friday prayers. Something that Holy Quran has called mandatory for young Muslim men, all Muslim men. They, and the, this is the best one that I like. Some of the parents will say, you don't have to worry about these outwardly acts of saying your salat or having your parda or none of that really matters because you have to be good at heart. Just be good at heart, that will take you through. Hazrat Masih Maud in Kashti Anu addresses that issue. We understand. Nobody wants to be, a, nobody's preaching isolation here. No one's saying just go out and live a life of isolation. We all believe in integration. Hazur says, I do not wish to stop you from worldly good. But you should not follow the ways of those who think that this world is everything. Do not ape other nations. Be proud of who you are. What is that you seek from those who are of this earth? Those who are not satisfied in their own minds, how can they give you satisfaction? See, my brothers and sisters, you said you wanted to be a lion, but a lion does not worry about fitting in. A lion is never worried about looking different in the jungle. A lion takes pride in that. I kept on thinking, how do I make sure that that message is loud and clear? So I'm going to tell you the story of Howard Scott. Howard Scott was an African-American who was at the verge of a very successful jazz musician he was playing trombone in the band of Billy Eckstein in the 1940s. He would come home with dollar bills oozing from his pockets till a day came when Howard Scott came across a book titled Life of Muhammad. The book changed Howard Scott inside out. He gave up music. He gave up his career that he used to say it runs in my life. You cannot take music out of me. He gave it up and he accepted Islam in Ahmadiyya. He did his bad. His friends told him, Howard, you don't have to give up music. You can be a Muslim and still play music. He said, I know. But my fear is I won't be able to do justice with both. Howard Scott changed his name. He became Muhammad Sadiq. He changed his outlook. He grew a beard. And he had to pay his mortgages. So what did, what did he do? He became an ordinary painter in the streets of Newark, New Jersey. He would drive 30 miles one way from New Jersey to New York to attend his Friday prayers through the bridges, through the traffic. He would take his family with him. Sometimes there would be no one at the mosque and they would do their prayers by themselves, come back home. He did this for years and years. Howard Scott had a choice to go to college. He started engineering, but then he chose to read Arabic and learn Quran. In 1975, he went to Rabwa and in the blessed company of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Salis Rahimullah, there were some non Ahmadi guests sitting. So Hazur said, Muhammad Sadiq, why don't you recite Quran? Muhammad Sadiq starts reciting these long passages of Holy Quran in Arabic and the jaws dropped, my brothers and sisters. The people who are sitting there, they can't believe. Here is an African American who's coming from the other end of the globe and he keeps reciting Quran. When he came back, 
he lost his eyesight after a few years to cataract. But he never accepted to be a follower. Howard Scott or Muhammad Sadiq was a leader. He was a lion. But why did Muhammad Sadiq care so much about his outwardly looks? Why was, was he not good at heart? So being good at heart was not enough for Muhammad Sadiq? Probably he was aware that Hazrat Masih Muhammad Sallallahu has said that if you take water from a small canal and drink it and that water is bitter, it's murky, it's smelly, what would be your logical conclusion? Your conclusion would be that whichever river or reservoir this water is coming from is probably polluted. The source is also polluted. So Hazur said these outwardly acts that we have, they're a reflection of our heart. If our outwardly acts are impure, they could be an indication of an impure heart. Why did he give up music, money, fame? Most likely because he believed in an afterlife. Hazur says an imminent danger of destruction are people who are enamored with material philosophies. Look, Einstein discovered relativity. Einstein scored a Nobel Prize, but what did he lose in the process? He lost his God. What good is that Nobel Prize? Would you want your children to score a Nobel Prize like that? Where they find some great invention, but they lose God in the process? So what did Muhammad Sadiq gain? I don't know. I wish I knew. Because Allah Ta'ala has abundance of rewards for his people like him, but I can quote you an incidence. In early 90s, Muhammad Sadiq took a trip to London and Hazrat Khalifa al Masih al-Rabi was giving a speech. Somewhere during that speech, Muhammad Sadiq couldn't control himself and he goes, Naray Takbir. Just like that. And what did Hazrat Khalifa al Masih al-Rabi say? He stopped. Hazur stopped his speech. Hazur said, Stop! I just heard the voice of an angel. Hazur pointed Muhammad Sadiq out and asked him to stand up. And Muhammad Sadiq is trembling and people are helping him to stand up. Here is this man who can't even see. You know how Hazur recognized? Because he never gave up his bath. That was the guardian of his identity. When he lost his eyesight and he couldn't write letters anymore, he was making audio tapes and sending them to Hazur as letters. He was recording his letters, so Hazur recognized his voice. And then Hazur introduces Muhammad Sadiq on an international stage to the world. The fame, the money, whatever you could have gained with Billy Eckstein, Muhammad Sadiq got a million fold. How many of you here in this room have Billy Eckstein as your role model? It means nothing to you, right? How many of you have Khalifat al Masih Rabi as your role model? So my brothers and sisters, a lion follows a lion. A lion is not going to just pick any animal and start following him. So he followed his Khalifatul Masih. So my message to the youth, whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you're going to school, college, university, or a job, I tell you today, bath cannot be inherited. Just be very clear about that. Just because you're a son or a daughter of an engineer, MIT is not going to give you a degree in engineering. You'll have to earn it. Hazrat Muslim Aud ta'ala anhu, at the age of 11, one day said that he came home with anger. And Hazur said that I am going to investigate the claim of Hazrat Masih Maud wasalam, and I'm not going to accept him just because he's my father. I will investigate the claim of Hazrat Masih Maud wasalam. And after that, if he's proven Nazubullah bin Zalik wrong, I will leave the house. My brothers and sisters, where did Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood end up with that investigation? He became Khalifa al Masisani. He turned into Muslim Aud. And Madiyat is way more precious than a birth accident. And most of us just take it for granted when we are born into it. Once you develop that conviction, that commitment, only then you can call yourself an Ahmadi Muslim. Then you have pride. Then you have identity. Then you are a lion. But see, you cannot wear the mask of a lion, go in a jungle, and pretend everybody will accept you as a lion. 
Hazur says, if you don't have that conviction, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih al-Khamis says, then it's Ahmadiyyad is just a label for you. How far are you going to go with that label? My appeal for the parents, whether you're mothers or fathers, bind your children with Khalifatul Masih. Make him understand the value of that bath. Otherwise, it's a process of dilution with every generation. See, we all take pride that our grandparents made so many sacrifices about Islam and Ahmadiyyad. That's not the question anymore. The question is, will your grandchildren make the same sacrifices? Think about it. Will your grandchildren make the same sacrifices that your grandparents made? Hazur says, if you will not pay heed to the sayings of Khalifa of the time, not only that you will become distant from the blessings of God, but you will also weaken the faith of your next generation. And this is where it's very interesting. If you read the behavior of lions, they have gender roles. A lioness is going to do certain things and a lion is going to do certain things. It's the role of a lioness, as Islam also says, the institution of motherhood. That's where a cub learns how to become a lion when he grows up. So that institution, let's not lose that institution, that glorified institution of motherhood. That's where, in my humble opinion, we should be telling our children that in matters of faith ever, if my opinion does not match with Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih's opinion, I tell my children all the time that you follow Hazul, you don't follow Baba. If there's ever a conflict, God forbid, between my approach and Hazrat Sahib's approach, then you follow Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih. As office holders, we do Khalifat al-Masih's cause no good when we listen to that sermon and feel it is for someone else. If Sadr Khudam al feels that this sermon is for Khudam, it's not for me, then he has not done any good to the cause of Khalifat al-Masih. So this message of bad, this message of identity is for each and every one of us. One common problem is whenever there is a sermon, people think it's about somebody else. Just because, you know, I, I already know it, I've heard too many speeches, this is not for me. I want to break that dogma right here, brothers and sisters. Let's not look right and left. As I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. You may be sitting in front of me. I request the same from you. Wherever you are in your life, whichever station, look at it individually. And this brings me to the verse that I recited in the beginning. Why is this bath so important? How come this bath helps you keep your identity in addition to being a solid American, how come this helps you? Allah Ta'ala says in Holy Quran, O Zul Qurnain, verily, Gog and Magog are creating disorder in the earth. Shall we then pay thee tribute on condition that you set up a barrier between us and them? Masih Ma'ud alayhi salatu wasalam is also Zul Qurnain. Hazur has written extensively on this topic. And he is the one, his teaching creates that barrier between good and bad. Parenting and raising children is a very personal issue. And I understand it's very sensitive. If you took offense to something I said, I apologize. Because I'm not here giving you a fatwa. I'm not claiming that I live your love your children more than you do. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. But my brothers and sisters, when we breach contracts, there are consequences. When I miss that mortgage payment, no matter what I was going through, there were consequences for me. So when we breach this, con this contract of bath, there will be consequences for our children. So that's all I can say. In the end, we are few. Youth, when I talk to them, they always say, Sala Sala, we are few, we have to fit in, we don't want to look different. I understand that. In the fourth year of prophethood, Ahazar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, invited 40 chiefs of Quraysh, big shots, and wanted to give them the message of Islam. After the feast, Rasulullah talked to them and with all his mercy urged them and asked, who will join me? Abu Lahab was sitting there, Abu Talib was sitting there, I'm sure Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahal, who knows? All the big shots were sitting there, they mocked, they laughed. A 13-year-old boy, a weak, trembling boy stood up and he goes, I know I'm the youngest and I know I'm the weakest, but I will join you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No doubt, that 13-year-old boy received the title of Asadullah, 
lion of Allah. This was Hazrat Ali Karbala Bacho, Hazrat Ali Raziyala Ta'ala Anho. And I'm not making it up. If you think this simile I just chose about this whole thing about lion, this is not my thinking. Hazrat Masih Mawadullah Salatu Wasalam has said this. Every Khalifa of Ahmadiyyat has said this. Hazur says, Jo khuda ka hai, usse lalkarna achha nahi. It's not a good idea to challenge someone who's from God. Haath sheron par na dal, ay rob ay zar o nazar. Dare not attack these lions, O you lifeless fox. My dear brothers and sisters, through the prayers of Khulafa, through the prayers of Hazrat Masih Madala Salatu Wasalam, that genetic makeup is now in your blood. Someone stands here, asks you a question and you unanimously say, I want to be a lion. I didn't know what your response would be. It's in your blood. I know it. Because you are born spiritual lions. You are born to lead. You are not born to follow. And when you follow, you follow Khalifatul Masih. You follow a lion. Guess what? Life is a jungle. That was not just a rhetorical, theoretical question. Life is a jungle. And there is only one way to, for you and I to survive that. Is to think and behave like lions. The label is not going to work. For a second, stop crying about the martyrs of Lahore. For they are still alive. Allah Ta'ala says, they are alive, only you perceive not. Think of Amisa of Lahore. He would come to work every day and he would say, gentlemen, I am an Ahmadi. That was a lion of God. That was a lion of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Think of the mother who told her son that you go and say your Friday prayers at exactly the same spot where your father was martyred last week. That Ahmadi mother was a lioness. So let's stop crying about them. Let's worry about ourselves for a second. If we don't, and by the way, again, not all of us, some of us, maybe I'm one of those, pray for me as well. But if we don't roll up our sleeves and regain our identity, we may die a death of oblivion. Those are princesses. Khalifat al-Masih says, blessed are the Ahmadis of Lahore. They don't need our sympathies, they need our prayers. They're honorable. If we could not regain our identity here in the West, that will be death. Take pride in who you are. And why would you not take pride? See, whatever the world is looking for, whatever the America is looking for, you have that. They say, where are these educated Muslims? You hail the first Nobel Prize in the history of Islam. And Allah knows how many more in the making. I wish and pray that those are sitting here today who may be scoring those Nobel Prize later on. So we are the ones. When the world asks, where are these moderate Muslims? We are the ones. We are not some post-9-11 bandwagon about peace. We are living peace for the past 120 years despite atrocities and torture. Who else can claim that they have that spiritual leadership? You have that. So why would you not be proud of who you are? One important characteristic of lions. Lions protect their identity. They protect their tribe. They don't worry about fitting in. A lion is never worried because the other animals outnumber him in the jungle. A lion never looks at numbers and being a question of too many or too few is not relevant for a lion. This coming Monday, two days from now, that pursuit of happiness is going to suck us right back into that life. We will hear all these speeches here. We will go home. The realities of life will face us again. The school bus will come in the same neighborhood. The Ahmadi boy and girl will have to face their roommates in the college dorms again. Parents will have the same dilemma. We have a choice to make. We can try to fit in like Abu Jahl, like Abu Lahab, or we can try to declare our identity with pride like Hazrat Ali Raziallahu Anhu.
May Allah Ta'ala grant us the wisdom and courage to make the right choice. Jazakumullah.